Installing a new shower door is easier than you think. Before starting, read the instruction manual for your Delta Everedge shower door. Don't skip parts of the video as you may miss key steps and consult the manual for more information. Then check that you have all the tools required for this install. Don't forget safety equipment like safety glasses, closed toed shoes, and non-slip cut resistant gloves. You'll also need two people for this install, so make sure to have someone else on hand. Next, you'll want to make sure that your shower door can fit in your enclosure. Measure the height, making sure the distance from sill to ceiling is over 73 inches. 61 inches if you're installing into an enclosure with a tub. Then, check the width of your enclosure. First at the bottom, and then six feet up the wall. Most walls aren't perfect, so these measurements most likely will differ. As long as the difference is less than 3 eighths of an inch, and both these measurements are within our 55 and 3 eighths to 59 and 3 eighths inch size requirements for our 60 inch door, or 43 and 3 eighths to 47 and 3 eighths inch size requirements for our 48 inch door, this door can be installed in your enclosure. If your enclosure has an acrylic surround, you'll need to check its wall height as well. This height needs to be more than 69 and 3 eighths of an inch for shower enclosures, and 61 inches for tub enclosures. You'll also need to figure out if there's a stud near the front of your enclosure, as this is critical for an install. Once the center of the stud is found, mark its location at the bottom of the enclosure. The outer edge of the sill should be at least two and a half inches away from this mark, and the inside edge of the sill should be at least three eighths of an inch away from this mark. If after double checking, all these measurements match the requirements, the door can be installed in your enclosure. If you have any questions about these measurements, call or email us here. Now, make sure you have all the components listed in the instruction manual, and that there aren't any stowaways hiding in pieces of packaging. It is also a good idea to tape over the drain as to not lose anything during the install. And be aware, there are two types of screw anchors that come with each shower door. One is used when installing into hollow acrylic parts of an enclosure, and a more standard tile anchor for the parts of the enclosure that are more solid like tile or marble. Tile or marble surfaces should also be drilled with tile drill bits. Regular drill bits tend to crack tiles and should be avoided. Also, be very careful with each glass panel. The glass is tempered, which is stronger than normal glass, but not unbreakable. If hard materials, such as tile or metal, contact the glass, it could damage it and cause it to break. For this reason, please leave corner protectors on the glass until prompted to remove and only place the glass on soft materials like cardboard or styrofoam when it is not on the shower door track. Lastly, this is important, when cutting the top track or dam strip, it is crucial that you are certain all measurements and marks are correct. A miscut track could completely ruin an install and is one of the most common issues when trying to install a shower door. If at any point you have an issue, call this number or email us here. To start off, make sure you have a stud near the front of the enclosure. If the top rail brackets are not able to be installed into a stud, this door cannot be installed. Once confirmed, mark the center of the stud at the top and bottom of the enclosure. Place the bracket template at this mark, ensuring it is level. Then mark the holes and remove the guide. Most shower enclosures are made from either tile or acrylic. If the wall is tile, avoid cracking your tile by using a tile drill bit to drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole, followed by a 1 quarter inch final hole. If the wall is acrylic, use a regular drill bit to drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole, followed by a 3 8 of an inch final hole. Insert the appropriate anchors. Before installing, loosen all the screws on the top collar and remove the wall bracket. Place the collar wall bracket over the holes and screw into place. Repeat previous steps with the other side. Measure the distance between the insides of both wall brackets. Subtract a quarter inch from this measurement and mark it out on the top rail. Double check your measurement and mark as a miscut rail could easily ruin an install. Once certain, cut the top rail at this mark. 
Now, remove the covers from both inside rollers and slide them into the top rail, followed by the top collars, ensuring that the longer collar set screws are on the same side as the roller bolts. Hold the top rail in line with the wall brackets and slide the collars back over the brackets. Using an Allen wrench, hand tighten all of the set screws on top of the collars until each is fully secured. Measure the distance between the side walls at the bottom of the enclosure. Subtract 7 eighths of an inch from this measurement and mark it out on the dam strip. Again, double check your measurement and mark as a miscut strip could easily ruin an install. Once certain, cut the dam strip at this mark. Place a thick bead of sealant in the center channel on the underside of the dam strip. Then, place the dam strip at the bottom of the enclosure. One and a half inches from the center stud mark and at least 7 sixteenths of an inch away from the edge of the sill. Apply silicone to the inside of the dam strip brackets. With each bracket against the wall, slide them over either end of the dam strip. Next, measure and mark the center of the enclosure. Place the center guide on the dam strip, centered with this mark. Mark this hole and remove the guide. Most shower enclosures are made from either tile or acrylic. If the sill is tile, avoid cracking the tile by using a tile drill bit to drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole followed by a 1 quarter inch final hole. If the sill is acrylic, use a regular drill bit to drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole followed by a 3 8 of an inch final hole. Insert appropriate anchors. Add beads of silicone to the bottom of the center guide. Replace the guide and screw into place. Then, apply silicone to the center guide screw cap and place the cap over the screw. Take the inside glass panel out of the box and lay it on a soft material such as cardboard. You can tell the difference between the two panels by the height of the top roller holes. Stand near the bottom of the glass panel and make sure the holes for the handle are on the same side as the shower head. If the shower head is on the right side of the enclosure, the holes should be on the right. If the shower head is on the left side of the enclosure, the hole should be on the left. Inspect the glass for any damage, such as chips or scratches, that could have occurred in transit. If any damage is found, do not attempt to return the panel to the seller. Instead, call this number for a replacement panel. We can help you. As mentioned before, the glass is strong but not unbreakable and should be handled with care. Uncovered glass should not encounter hard surfaces like tile or metal, and corner protectors should be left on the glass until prompted to remove. Remove the stickers from the bottom corner protectors, but leave the corner protectors on the glass. Then, add the glazing channel, ensuring the diverter blade faces down, and the ends are one quarter of an inch away from the edge of the glass. Next, move the inside rollers to the center of the track. Unscrew the roller nuts and adjustment bushings from both inside rollers using the multi-tool that comes with your shower door. Take the adjustment bushings and tape them into the roller holes with the hexagon side on the same side as the diverter blade. These components are very important. If the metal roller contacts the glass, it could damage the glass and lead it to shatter. With someone else's help, carefully maneuver the glass panel into the shower enclosure with the diverter blade facing the inside of the enclosure. Place the bottom edge into the innermost track of the center guide as you align the bushing holes with the rollers. After the roller bolts are threaded through, reinstall the roller nut using the multi-tool to hand tighten both roller nuts until fully secured. Replace roller screw covers. Take the remaining glass panel out of the box and lay it on a soft material such as cardboard. Stand near the bottom of the glass panel. Make sure the holes for the handles are on the same side as the shower head. If the shower head is on the right side of the enclosure, the hole should be on the right. If the shower head is on the left side of the enclosure, the hole should be on the left. Inspect the glass for any damage, such as chips or scratches, that could have occurred in transit. If any damage is found, do not attempt to return the panel to the seller. 
Instead, call this number for a replacement panel. We can help you. As mentioned before, the glass is strong but not unbreakable and should be handled with care. Uncovered glass should not encounter hard surfaces like tile or metal and corner protectors should be left on the glass until prompted to remove. Remove the stickers from the bottom corner protectors, but leave the corner protectors on the glass. Then add the glazing channel, ensuring the diverter blade faces up this time, with the ends still one quarter of an inch from the edge of the glass. Next, disassemble the covers, roller nuts, and adjustment bushings from both outside rollers, using the multi-tool that comes with your shower door. Take the adjustment bushings and tape them into the roller holes, this time with the hex gun on the opposite side as the diverter blade. These components are very important. If the metal roller contacts the glass, it could damage the glass and lead it to shatter. With the help of someone else, carefully maneuver the glass panel outside the shower enclosure with the diverter blade facing the inside of the enclosure. Place the bottom edge into the outermost track of the center guide as someone places the outer rollers onto the top rail. To ensure the door doesn't come off the track while in use, the rollers need to be added at an angle to allow the anti-jump key to hook into the top rail. Once placed, align the roller bolt with one of the bushing holes and thread the roller bolt through. Reinstall the roller nut to hold the panel in place. While someone continues to support the glass, repeat these steps with the other roller. Remember to ensure the anti-jump key hooks into the top rail. Now, use the multi-tool to hand tighten both roller nuts until fully secured. Replace roller screw covers. With one of the doors, remove the top and bottom corner protectors nearest the wall and add one of the magnetic seals. This seal should align with the top and bottom of the glass. Slide one of the inner magnetic strips into one of the side jams. Then, place the side jam on the magnetic seal. Using the door, carefully press the side jam against the wall and mark the edge, ensuring it aligns with the seal. Open the door, remove the side jam, and slide the magnetic strip back out. Add a cap over one end of the side jam and place it back on the wall. With the cap side on the sill and the edge aligned with the marks, tape the side jam to the wall. Mark all four holes and remove the side jam. Most shower enclosures are made from either tile or acrylic. If the wall is tile, avoid cracking your tile by using a tile drill bit to drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole followed by a 1 quarter inch final hole at each location. If the wall is made of acrylic, use a regular drill bit to drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole followed by a 3 8 of an inch final hole at each location. Insert appropriate anchors. Replace the side jam and screw into place. Slide the inner magnetic strip back into the side jam along with the remaining cap. Repeat these steps for the other side jam. In the direction of the handle holes, carefully move each door towards the wall and see how it lines up. If an adjustment of a door is needed, remove the covers on that door's rollers. Loosen the roller nut, but do not remove it. Using the multi-tool, raise or lower either end of the door by turning either adjustment bushings. Once aligned, hand tighten the roller nut until fully secured, followed by reinstalling the roller covers. Hold a blade seal up to the edge of one of the doors, ensuring the blade faces the other door. Cut only the blade four and three quarters of an inch from the top and 5 eighths of an inch from the bottom of the seal. Repeat these steps with the other blade seal. In addition to providing water retention, these components protect the glass while in use and should not be skipped.
Now, remove the final corner protectors and install both blade seals with each blade facing the other door. Use silicone to seal the inside edges of the side jams, dam strip, and center guide. Disassemble both sets of handles. Reassemble the handles on the door, ensuring all gaskets and bushings are used in order to protect the glass. Once screws are hand tightened and fully secured, add screw covers to the handles. Lastly, there's important safety and usage information on the glass shower door sticker. The door's user or owner should be allowed to read the information before the sticker is removed. And there you have it, a brand new shower door to completely revamp your bathroom. If you have any further questions, call this number 877-500-2000.